What is up, guys? We're here um, to film a little couples Q&A. Um, thought it would be fun for you guys and fun for us as well. Uh, so I put on my story the question box for you guys to ask us a few questions that were you know, mostly couple related and you know, try and keep them fun um, for the most part. I know there's some in there that are a little more serious, like kind of couple questions, but you know, we'll do a good mix of the two. Um, so yeah, we're going to hop into them. Hope you guys enjoy. And yes, I have coffee. <laughs> okay. What was the initial reaction from Chris after you told him you were dating your, his sister? Oh, well, that's something you have to ask Christopher. Yeah, you have to ask Chris that. But you guys also have to remember, Chris was in, like, grade 11 or 10 when I started dating Melissa. Like, he was a little kid, you know? Like, he was very young. Um, and I don't think he... I think at that point, too, he was really starting to kind of get into his love for bodybuilding. So I think it, for him, it was honestly, like, cool that I was dating his sister. Because it was like, I was the only real bodybuilder in the city. Um, you know, so to have me around was, like, kind of cool for him at the time. Um, you know, obviously it's crazy now, like he's Mr. Olympia and it's, it's a whole different ball game now, but, uh, yeah, but like in context, you were like, you were the biggest, like you were known, like Christopher knew who you were. Cause Ian was like the biggest, bo like we lived in a small suburb and Ian was like the biggest guy in the suburb. So I feel like Christopher was like, Oh my God, I can't believe she's dating the bodybuilder. Like, like he thought it was cool. Uh, this is one for you. Does Melissa ever get annoyed by an Ian's enhanced libido? <laughs> annoyed isn't the right word uh, it, not, obviously it's not annoying when your husband wants to have sex with you that's not annoying <laughs> how dare you um guilty maybe like i feel like sometimes i'm like oh i'm definitely like i don't put out enough but that's so inappropriate isn't it <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no i never get annoyed i just sometimes feel bad because i don't match it i guess is yeah. that how you say it sure uh, would you rather have triple the ass hair or triple the armpit hair? So a lot of, a lot of ass hair, a lot of armpit hair. Because like, you have none, so it's like, what, if you had to have but you a bunch of either. You can still get rid of it, right? Obviously. Oh, yeah, so it doesn't really change anything. Well, no, it does for me because I, I can shave my armpits every day. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't shave your ass every day. No. I, then I would have to go get, like, a Brazilian every two days. Yeah. Like, well, it wouldn't grow that fast. But... If it was triple, it might grow It would quick. grow faster, though. Yeah. So I would rather armpit hair because I could deal with it myself. Yeah, I'd probably pick armpit hair. I feel like it would be easier to Yeah, you could maintain. just, like... Yeah. A lot, that, like, triple the ass hair what I already have? That would be a lot. Well, you would have an issue. I'd have an issue. Like, yeah. you would... like. That'd be a hygiene issue. <laughs> <laughs> Wet wipes only at that point. What's the other like when they're drunk? I'm, I feel like no, I'm... No, it's I'm, what's the other like. Oh. Don't answer yourself. Okay. Ian is probably the most amazing human ever when he's drunk. Like Not usually, though. Only when I'm drunk. Fuck off. <laughs> I feel like everyone loves him and he's like the life of the party and he just like sucks everyone into his like super high energy and when him and christopher are drunk together th come on that's like the best night of anyone especially life. when chris starts doing this gets the one-eyed laugh you know <laughs> chris st starts laughing with one eye closed that's the you know well, he's it's real in i find like you are funny and christopher finds you funny when you're when he's when drunk, drunk yeah. and then when he laughs you just want to make him laugh more and yeah. it's it's so fun it's like the best time <laughs> melissa's ever. hard because like you're almost the exact same you're you're a little more like i'm more loving don't you think more loving and like more a little more uh adventurous and i don't mean just in a sexual way i just mean, <laughs> i mean like in general like you know if, if people are doing something she's more like down to do I'm a stuff yes man. you're more of a yes man when you're drunk i'm a yes man when i'm not though uh yes but less so Okay. Okay. Um, but other than that, it's really hard to tell, to be honest. I mean, she could be one drinker and her, like, 15 drinks in, and it's almost hard to tell until she starts throwing up in the toilet. So there's, like, all, I don't there's do no. That very often. But there's no, like, there's no indicator. It's not like she's, like, you can be like, well, she's really fucked up. She's going to start throwing up soon. You're, like, completely normal, and then you're just, like, done. You it's know? tricky because <laughs> I feel like the way I speak, like, doesn't change. No, so, it doesn't. like, you know how some people get sloppy, they'll slur, they yeah, won't. You're, you're the they, exact same. They'll speak differently. That stays the same. So, I could be blackout, and people have no idea. Yeah. What was y'all's first date like? <laughs> what do you th I'm curious because I know what I consider our first date. What do you consider our first date? Well, first date, I guess, technically, would be when we went to Moxie's. For lunch. For lunch. <laughs> <laughs> A lunch date. That's it, guys. Lunch dates. Yeah, we went to Moxie's, so it's like a... 
uh, for uh, you guys saw that in the U.S. Moxies. Yeah, we went to one in Texas. Was that Milestones or was that Moxies? That was Moxies. Yeah, so like a semi nice. It's like cact- sit down restaurant. Wait, is Cactus Club Canadian too? I don't know, but it, it's a decent restaurant. We went there for like a late lunch date, but we had already been hanging out for some time before this. Like, but I know, was I was scared to be alone with you. Yeah, what? Because I was gonna rape you? Like what? <laughs> no, I had never been on a date before. Oh, sure, okay. And like he kept asking me to go out to dinner, and I was just like. I was I was shy. I was nervous. Yeah. Because we were always drinking around other people. We were super affectionate at that point, but like, you know, Ashley was always around. Yeah. And like for me to like go to a fancy dinner where like he was gonna pay, like I actually I was twenty three or twenty two. How old was I? Twenty one. Twenty one, and that had ne- I had never experienced that before. Yeah. So I feel like you were you were trying to like white night, and I was like, no, let's no. just hang out and with you everybody didn't, else. You didn't eat either. She didn't want to eat. So I like sat there and ate a steak like by myself for lunch. I I think I had a salad. Did you? I can't even remember if you ate. Listen, I I when I was young, I yeah, I wouldn't eat a lot in front of guys when I was dating, and uh, I didn't like being alone with you. Yeah. But then it changed really quickly. I don't know if you have one of these. What was a turnoff about each other that you noticed when you first started dating? His room smelled really bad. Yeah. He had like a lot of dirty laundry. I didn't clean my room at first. I had, cause I, I didn't like, I lived alone for a long time. Like I just, I was 19, 20 at the time. Like I didn't have like. Well, you didn't do laundry. I didn't do laundry. I shouldn't say it was dirty. Cause like it wasn't dirty. There was just like, like Ian had so many free t-shirts from his job that like, instead of doing laundry, he would just like. Wear buy, a new one. Wear new shirts and buy new underwear. Yeah. So there was like dirty laundry and like, I'm the type of person, even like the bed sheets, you could tell he didn't wash them. I'm the type of person that like. Right now, I wash our sheets, like, what, twice a week? At least, yeah. Like, I am I need things to, like, feel clean, smell clean. So, yeah, like, and, like, obviously, I've, I've got older. I've adapted to living with a woman that has, like... and, oh, and now, oh, you're so clean. Yeah, and, like, I understand, like, you know, it's it, these become things that, that you then enjoy yourself. Like, at the time, I was just like, meh, whatever. And then as you get in the routine of doing them initially for someone else then you're kind of like okay like i don't mind doing this it's like probably for the best and you kind of get in the house i also shit like it wasn't a turn off like literally nothing i don't think turns me off from you but like it was some i just started doing your laundry yeah she started doing my laundry yeah because i was sleeping there so i was like yo if i'm sleeping here like yeah it has to be a nice environment for me i I literally can't even think of one can you think of something that would have turned you off me off about you the only thing i can think of is like if i would ever like get like too drunk or like party too, like in the yeah, bar yeah but even we just talked about you, you're like the same when you're drunk the only thing is I th- when I was flirty with other people yeah it's like when we first started dating or like we weren't even dating at this point when we were first like courting there was like other guys she, well not other like guys lurking yeah you, you like tried to make a point that like like it was like it playing hard to get, but like you I know, didn't, it, I was not playing hard to get. I like was a little not, coy. No, you know? I was not. I didn't want to commit. Oh, okay. Come so on. Fear of commitment, whatever. You he, know? <laughs> no, he thinks it's about him. Like the guys are always like, "Oh, she's playing hard to get." No, I actually just didn't. I was just living. You weren't there yet. I was just living. Yeah, fair enough. And you, you respected that. Oh yeah. And I, I never mean, lied to you. No, that's true. Do you think you guys would still fall in love now if you were single? <laughs> I think everyone's expected to just be like, yes, I know I would, but no, I think you, that's that's a question no one's ever asked. People it's it's before. it's hard because like no one, I it, you have to think about it. I mean, look, I think if we did, then we would now because we were farther apart in terms of people and personalities when we started than we are now, and I think if we fell in love when we were living completely different lifestyles, we didn't really understand each other, and we were like, you know, coming from a very different lifestyle world and then came together now that we've like kind of lived the same life i don't think it would be very difficult you know you know what i'm saying yeah no i i feel like i would yeah just the way like the way the the thing that made me fall in love with you and how you carry yourself is is almost like even more so now like your confidence and your like what's the word when you like command a room i don't want to say authority is it authority sure i don't know like that that is, that's what, like, made me, like, it's so attracted to you at first. And I feel like now that's even, like, more pronounced in you, you know? Is it okay to have sex five weeks out from a show? Five weeks? 
Dude, it's okay to have sex like 30 minutes before a show. What are you saying five weeks before the Ian show? Ian tries to have sex between prejudge and finals. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, no, you have a tan I've on. never done that. You I've have. Been. Babe, you did in Texas. You did. Yeah. I was changing to go to finals and you were like. <laughs> and I was like, you're psychotic. Yeah, with the tan on. Okay, you're good <laughs> until the tan's on. Once the tan's on, then it's like, yeah. But if they're competing too and she also has a tan on, then you're good to go. That would be messy. Yeah, but then it's like both the same mess. Yeah, but you're still going to ruin both your tans then. No, but if it's between Prejudge and Nisha, you're going to get sprayed again anyways. You know? Yeah. So. I don't I don't know if that's very common for people to do that, but But this, no, like it, I think the, I think thing. the question is in a ser- if it's being serious, which I hope it's not. Wait, do they think it's going to physically affect I them? I think that they're going to like you know when you hear like boxers like, you know, blah 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 and they don't have sex because they think it's going to like affect their performance or whatever. That's nonsense. Especially having, in bodybuilding. Having it's not a, sex increases your aggression in testosterone. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's be serious. You're all taking fucking steroids anyways. You're not worrying about your natural testosterone well, levels, you know? not everyone, but... I think most of the people we're speaking to. Whatever. <laughs> okay, moving on. But yeah, no, I, you're, you're perfectly good to have sex right up to the show. I mean, that's good. Good for you. You know, especially when you're like in a prep and you're stressed. And a lot of times your sex drive is lower... So if you're still feeling good and you still want to have sex and your partner still wants to have sex and all this stuff, I mean, fucking give her. I mean, Don't that's... you think sometimes even if your, like, sex drive is low, that you should just do it anyways? Yeah, just force it. <laughs> no, don't force it, but just, like, start and, like... I think you should always try and make an effort. Yeah. Yes, of course. Um... Oh, I want I want you to read this and say yes. Can, we miss. Can we her. see m- more of Melissa training in your YouTube videos? Well, yes, but Melissa a lot of the time doesn't want to train with me because she's scared to train with me. Okay. I've been lazy. Okay, I just came off a fucking twelve month prep where I didn't even step on stage, <laughs> <laughs> and I have been taking a bit of a break, and that means avoiding training with Ian because he's scary. Yeah. But yes, soon. Does Melissa shave your ass? Yes. When we get to shows and my ass needs to be shaved, Melissa shaves my ass. We only shave his butt before stage, though. You don't, like, keep a bald ass all year. No. Like, if I'm in prep and I'm, I'm taking photos um, and I want it, like, I don't want to have a hairy ass, I might yeah, take, like, near, my electric near, shaver and just, like, do it myself as good as I can. Near the end, when you start, like, wanting to see the detail in the videos. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. This fucking shirt. I had it on a hanger and now it's, like, you know. It's okay. It makes you look... Uh... I got shoulder pads in. <laughs> um, How did... Oh. Melissa, did you ever feel like you could have done better than Ian? You both look good anyway. I don't know what that means. Do you think you could have done better than me? No. If I, if I thought good I could answer. do better with him, I would be with somebody else. Like, I'm not going to settle. <laughs> like, the biggest decision in my life. No. How did you first meet? Uh, did you both like each other right away, or who did the pursuing? You want to tell the story? Um, I think we both did like each other right away. I think um, the first time I met him, I was coming off a shift, and it was like 10 o'clock, and I used to bus from downtown to the park and ride in Canada because I had a car, but I didn't want to pay for parking. And my girlfriend picked me up, and she was like, you're coming with me. We're going to the bar. And I was like, I don't want to go to the bar. I have to work tomorrow morning. And she like forced me because I'm pretty sure, if she's watching this, this would be so funny. I'm pretty sure she had a crush on him. And she wanted me to like wing woman her or like, you know, she didn't want to show up alone with a group of dudes and be like, hi, I'm here. So I took one for the team and I was like, yeah, I'll come. I'll have one beer. And uh, we show up and you were there with like three of your buddies, right? I can't quite remember who I was with. I feel like you were with Spencer. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Um, Brock, maybe? Anyways, yeah, okay. Um, and, uh, actually, I don't even think I was going to have one beer, because I had to work the next morning, and I wasn't good at just having one. I was not going (laughs) to drink at all. So, nothing's changed there. Um, so we showed up, and, like, we met, we said hello to everyone. I think I introduced myself, because we had never actually spoken. No, we went to high school together, and we actually graduated the same year, so we're born... The same year, we went to high school. Graduated 2008. Graduated 2008, the same graduating class at the same high school. But we were in very, very different social circles. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had kind of like one mutual friend that well, I grew listen, up with. Well, after, listen, after high school, we graduated and we both stayed in the same... Well, social circles change after high school. They it's, do you know, change, obviously... but we also stayed in the... Like, I, I moved downtown and then I moved back to Canada. Yeah. So you start running into people when you're going out and you're in your early 20s and you're, you live in the same, like 
small town yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. So that's we re- that's when I met him that one night and we introduced each other and I remember he he asked if I wanted anything he was going to the bar and I said no thank you I'm good and I think he like brought me a beer anyways and it was a Corona with a lime and I was like I'm obsessed with you and he was just like so confident like he didn't there was there was no nerves he wasn't nervous like oh she said no so I'm not gonna get her one he literally was just like no I got you one anyways and he asked a lot of questions about me he was just like super engaging and uh he wasn't drinking which I found was like pretty dope because to be honest when you're 21 and you're out on a Friday night at a bar it's very rare to see someone that's like oh I'm choosing not to drink and it wasn't because he worked in the morning he was just like I don't want to drink and uh he drove me home Mm -hmm. and my girlfriend at the time she really wanted to drive me home but he was like no I'm going that way anyways I'm driving you home driving you home so he shoved like three or four of his buddies in the back and let me sit in the front which again I was like okay this is like a good sign and he didn't ask for my number. He didn't ask to hang out again. He did nothing. He just said, have a good night. It was nice to meet you. And he dropped me off at home. And uh, my friend had actually followed me home. And she was like, I'm parked outside your house. Come outside. I want to hear about the drive home. Because like she could tell that he was interested. And then when I went to see her, I was like, yeah, I'm into him. Like, give me his phone number. I want to say thank you for the ride. And she was like, oh, no, I'll say thank you for you. For you. I'll text him. I'll text him and say thank you for you. And I'm like, give me his fucking give number. Me his number. So I texted him and I said, thanks for driving me home with, like, a smiley face. And uh, I knew I had it then. Yeah, that was the end. <laughs> and then literally he, after that night when I gave him my number or when I texted him, he texted me every single day. Every Clean. day. Clingy. But, like, super chill. Hey, good morning. What's up? What are you doing today? How are you? How's your day? How's work? I, I was like, I couldn't tell if he wanted to be friends or if he wanted more. Because he would never hit on me. Well, I hit on you once I was... You didn't. Eventually, I did. Babe. Well, how did we end up here? I knocked on your bedroom door. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, next question. <laughs> Does cuddling slash hugging slippery Ian with a fresh tan after a show suck? Um... Well, he's not slippery because his hair grows back so fast. So it's actually... I don't even think they think like sweaty, wet, you know? Oh. Well, it sucks, but it sucks because you're prickly. It doesn't suck because you're sweaty. Well, I have, say, say I'm right off the stage and I put my shirt on. I'm like sweaty and... It's, yeah, it sucks. It's yeah. disgusting. Especially because there's glaze and it like sticks to you. Yeah. Oh my God, read that one. This one? Yeah. Would you rather have a threesome with two other girls or Melissa have it with two other guys? They're all strangers. How dare you? So this person is suggesting that we just full-blown cheat on each other. Well, no, they're asking a preference. So would you rather would you rather it be you or me? Is that the question? Well, like, no, he's asking if you would rather have a threesome with two other girls, so you and two str- stranger women, or me have it with two other men. Well, I don't want you to have it with two other men. Well, you're not having it with two other women. That's a stupid question. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're the one that wanted it. No, I thought he wanted to know if we would rather have it with another girl or another guy. Oh, I'm sure that's Like, together. Yeah, yeah. Um, when are you going to turn... That's not a couple's question. Well, What's he is going, but not yet. In May. Uh, guys, I say couple's questions that have, like, high volume versus high intensity. Like, this is not a fucking couple's question. Come yeah, on. but, babe, you make your whole your whole Instagram about trading, so That's what do you expect? What are your thoughts on swinging? Is that the question? Yeah, what are your thoughts on swinging, babe? Um, not for me, I guess. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. It's just, like, your mind. That's, that's good enough for me, you know? <laughs> What's the, what other answer do I give you? No, I'm just trying to dig. What, you know? are you into, are you into No, school? absolutely not, but I would cut a bitch, so that's why. <laughs> Best thing you've bought for each other. Oh, there's so many things. <laughs> for me, by you? Yeah. What's the best thing you've bought me? I mean, the best thing he's bought me is probably my ring, but like, there's also, like, he bought me my first fancy bag. You bought me, like, all of my expensive shit that I own. I bought this computer. Yeah, you bought me this. All my computers. I'm trying to think what the best thing you bought me. I've obviously not bought him anything good. What would you say? I don't I don't know. Ian's not like a very materialistic person. Have you 
guys start dating is that who's the better cook? People ask this all the time. I don't know. We're both we're both we're both probably even. We're both okay. Like yeah, we're neither of us are good. Neither of us are bad. You're much better at baking and stuff than I am. But no, I can follow directions. You can follow. I don't do that kind you of stuff. You don't follow but. directions. When do you guys plan on having kids and how many? Oh, you should answer this. Well, I can't answer. It's your body. You're no, ha- when do you want to have kids? Six years ago. No, but like, um, I think you need to be serious because your answer has changed over the last little bit. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think I'm in a place financially and mentally and these kind of things where I think I would want to have kids and I'm, I'm not afraid of having kids at all. Um, but I obviously understand I still live quite a selfish lifestyle and I also want to, and look, this isn't anything to, you know, bodybuilders that have kids and, you know, I know lots of guys do it and do great with that. Um, but, and I, and I think I could do as well, but I also, I also know that especially like in the off season stuff, like when I'm eating so much, it takes a lot out of me. Um, you know, especially my energy and I want to be able to like play with my kids and be active with my kids. And I don't think with where I'm at in my bodybuilding career, right now I would be able to be fully attentive to like the process of like having and raising kids, you know, like I would want to be more there, especially for those like formative, like young years. Um, and I, I think, you know, like when I'm eating a thousand grams of carbs and it's like hard for me to even like function other than training, I don't know if that would be like the best choice. Um, so, you know, I think I'll still probably be bodybuilding, but probably at the point where I'm not like trying to, push the off season and grow and that kind of stuff but Listen, you know, obviously there, there's you also have to think babe like when you have your first baby like the first year the baby doesn't like run around you know you don't take the no no i understand heart. that but so like i feel like we'll have it near t- probably closer to the end of your career yeah. because right now as he's saying honestly ian during a prep would be like perfect dad like per- perfect yeah i have a lot more energy during prep but i'm eating less i'm very very energetic but, but then when I'm eating a lot of food, it's like, it's right, almost impossible. Right to now in Ian's career, off seasons are just as, if not more important than prep. So, and they take more out of him. So that's basically like whatever, six months of the year that Ian is almost like sleeping for most of his life. Yeah. He's sleeping and eating and training. That's all he really does. Which like as his wife, I can handle that. I don't feel upset. But as a kid, like they would miss their dad. You know what I mean? They'd be like, why isn't dad at the park with me? So we're, we're going to do it in a few years. We might be freezing my eggs. Yeah. <laughs> What's the first thing you do if you were in my body, if we switched bodies? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say. <laughs> why? Well, I would want to like, what, you want to play with it? I would want to jerk off and I would want to pee standing up. Oh, and, okay. I w- and I would want to have sex with you. Like want with to myself. try the appendage. I would want to have sex with Melissa though. Oh, yeah. It's kind of narcissistic. I would want to know what it feels like. To have sex with you. Well, I'm in your body. I'm not gonna go sleep with another. Oh no, woman. no, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Does Melissa prefer your off-season physique or your contest physique? My girlfriend hates it when I'm shredded. I like both. I think I don't prefer one or the other. When he's like hard, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, hard. <laughs> um, no, it's it's all good. I like the way his face looks when he's shredded. Yeah, when I'm leaner. But um, no, his body is very comfortable for me, and it's always huge, so that's fine. Um, you have to pick one of the other members of Bro Chat or Bodybuilding Bollocks to have a threesome with. Who are you picking? Um, I need you to remind me of everybody. Well, oh, I'm picking Guy. You're picking Guy? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Guy, Fuad, Guy, and Paul. And Paul. (laughs) You want the daddies, eh? Yeah. (laughs) Just the old guys. I don't even need you. I just want Guy and (laughs) Paul. Her Guy and Paul. There you go. That answers the question before if we're doing me with two guys, or me with two girls, (laughs) you with two guys. It's just you with Paul and and Guy. Oh, God. Where do you see yourself and yourselves in five years? (coughs) <coughs> okay, so in five years, we're going to be 36? That's correct. Oh, my God. Um, should I answer? No, you answer first. No, you answer first. No, because I don't want my answer to aff- like affect yours. Um, five years, so 36. 
I think we'll have a kid. One? One or two. Okay. What are you, you okay there? You no. Got, you got to poop or something? <laughs> <laughs> this I don't, is getting antsy. I don't poop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Uh, it's tough because, like, five years isn't that far away. Well, it is. That's, like, we've been... That's, like, more than half of the time we've spent it's together half, in yeah. total. That's, like... I know it sounds like not a lot, but it is a lot. Yeah, like, there's... It's hard right now. We have a lot of, like, moving parts in our life, like... We're like living in Florida, okay, but we're but, like, Okay, but this is such an Ian answer. If whatever you could choose, where do you see yourself in five years? You get to choose. Well, no, I'm trying to be realistic. No, we want to hear what your dream in five years is. Um, two kids, top three at the Olympia, and living in Texas. Is that good? How many dogs? One more than we have, so four dogs. Yeah. I want an English bulldog. So a big fat boy. Um, yeah, I would say that we have one or two kids. If we have one, it's just because we chose to have one and be done. Because um, I want to be finished having kids. Uh, we have at least four dogs. We live in Texas. We have property where like, with I want I want property with like a fucking shed so I can put the dogs out there yeah. if I want to. Um, I. I honestly want my brother and Courtney to be living in Texas too. And I also want to have somewhere in my house that my in-laws or my parents can come stay with us for like weeks at a time and they still have their own place. Whether that's like a nanny suite or a guest house or something, I just need that so like they can visit for a long time but like I don't get annoyed by them, you know? And I feel like for, I'll be retired and I'll be running a very successful clothing brand. Retired at 36. No, retired from bodybuilding. Oh, from competing, okay. And I'll be running a very successful clothing company. Sure. Um, and designing clothes. And like, not having to post on Instagram <laughs> anymore. Well, oh, you'll have to for your company now. Yeah, but I can post, I can post prettier people. I don't have to post myself. Oh. You know, like I hire models and. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, what's the weirdest place you guys have hooked up? I can think of two. I would say either the back of a cab or a booth in a bar. Was, that's the two I was going to say. Or oh, at the if, golf if, cars parking lot. In a, a parking lot at the golf course. Golf, golf course, yeah. That was definitely the most enjoyable. Yeah. Because we were both sober. Were we? Yeah. We just like pulled over there and did it in the parking we lot? We were driving to mom and dad's house for, oh, yeah, for, we for were. Sunday dinner. Yeah. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> well, we did it before we got to the house. We didn't do it under their roof. That's true. Um, who gets more moody during prep? Uh, me. <laughs> I get more moody in general. I feel like Ian's like very like outward with how he feels. Like he'll get like anxious and he'll have like a flare, like a bit of a like. Ah. Whereas like I will just like have like a mood swing and be a quiet bitch for a day. Yeah. Um, biggest lesson you've learned from the first day married t since you've been married till today? Well, we'd already been together for like five years before we got married. So it's not like we got married and then all of a sudden it was like revolutionary after that or we learned a lot. We'd already knew each other and our relationship dynamic quite well by then. Yeah. You know, like we'd lived together for quite a f what, three or four years already by that point. Like we really, nothing really changed after we got married. But like, I, I think the biggest thing is just like, and I think this isn't just like marriage specific. I think it's just relationship specific. It's just compromise. You know, I think the biggest thing is just like, you know, adapting to other people's like wants and needs and being able to like compromise with like what maybe puts you out of your comfort zone a little bit. to like compromise for their happiness. I think it's a little bit of give and take always. Um, and then obviously like the obvious, obvious one is just like communication with stuff. I mean, I think, you know, keeping open lines and not letting things like build up or, you know, things like that yeah. is always like the best way to maintain Peace, you know? You want to add to that? Well, my answer is not the same. How dare you assume the same? Well, then add to it. Um, I feel like I have learned that there might be parts of, I mean, specifically Ian, that um, I don't understand, that confuse me, that might annoy me, that might bother me, that some or that I used to wish that I could change or fix. Um, and now 
I mean, especially this year, which is probably not since we've been married, but this is a new lesson for me. I'm learning to accept, not only accept those parts of him, but also love those parts of him because the, the parts that I'm so obsessed with about him wouldn't exist without those parts that I used to want to change. So it, it makes it a lot easier for me to like not get annoyed when he's like being sorry to put you on blast mm. but he's more of like a negative thinker whereas like he thinks of like the worst case scenarios whereas like I'm a very like faithful uh not faithful I have a lot of faith in the universe like I'm not I don't worry about what the bad stuff that might happen I just believe that everything's gonna be okay and that used to really bother me but now I'm like okay he's just different from me and I love him for that and it's making it a lot easier for me to just love him properly basically and I don't think I really understood that until like the last year or so when we like really went through some shit you know so good that's, answer that's my answer would you both still be together if you never looked the way you looked or never went to the gym well <laughs> they obviously don't know the genesis of our relationship I, I honestly can't believe how vain people think that we are well for one Melissa like didn't even work out when we met she wasn't competing she didn't train she was just like a normal girl going to college you know, might go to the gym and go on the elliptical or something like a, once a couple days a week and stuff. But she wasn't a, into this world whatsoever. And I was still, I mean, I'd done a couple amateur shows as a junior, but like I wasn't a pro bodybuilder. I wasn't, you know, a top, top tier bodybuilder or anything like I am today. Well, I'm, I'm, that's a little arrogant saying I'm a top, top tier. I wasn't a good bodybuilder like I am today. You weren't even a, you weren't bodybuilding. I was kind of taking a hiatus from bodybuilding. You weren't so. kind of. And you... I didn't even look good. I was kind of like, I had just broken my arm and stuff. Like I was kind of out of shape. Like probably looked a little fat to her. Cause you know, like I was still big, but like had a little fat on me too. So I just probably looked like a big dude. The you know? point of this is that. Yes. It wouldn't mean change anything. We, and we also are not two people that, um, honestly even in our own selves value outward appearances over anything like he would not choose his wife because she's the hottest girl and i would not choose my husband because he's the most jacked guy like that is not at all who we are and that's not yeah. like how we portray ourselves either we could give a fuck what we look like to be honest yeah. so my, i don't know that's that's my that's, husband has 15 minutes of facet cardio in his program do you think we could count 15 minutes of rough sex as the cardio i think that's Intense that's, cardio. Yeah. If you can do rough sex for 15 minutes, you have very good cardio. That's good cardio. Because, like, yeah. I could not do two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's the one. She just gets to lay there. He has to do the cardio. That fucking hurts still to be yeah, pounded for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, minutes yeah. That's, nah, I'm out. Yeah, but th th does that count? Yes. yes. That's cardio. You're good. You're yeah. good on that cardio. Well, we're not your coach, but I would say yes. Yeah. I mean, if I was your coach, I'd say give it to you. <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, Choose a partner for the other one if you had to get a divorce. Oh. <laughs> this is a trap I don't want to walk into. <laughs> oh, we're picking for... Okay, so you pick for me first. You better not fucking pick for yourself. That's what you were going to do. If you did I that, thought that's I'd what be, it was. I'm like, I'd this is a so, slippery slope. I'm so mad at you. Okay, you pick for me. Leah Audi. Well, nobody knows who that is, though. I don't care. Oh. She's a, she's a loyal... I don't know if Alex would appreciate that. What? I'm, t I'm saying he has a good <laughs> wife. <laughs> I'm stealing your wife now. She's super loyal. She cares about I her agree. family so yeah. much. Like, she's, like, a very legit human and partner. Mm -hmm. And she's, like, straight shooter. Mm -hmm. hmm. Who do you want your husband to be? Who? Guy, sister, Nina. <laughs> That's what you said, so I guess you just get him. He doesn't even care about me. What? You need to pick someone that would take care of me. That would love me properly. <laughs> no one. I want you to die alone after me. <laughs> if it's not me, it's no one. I don't even have an answer to that one. So, uh, everyone in his life, you're all shit, and you wouldn't be good enough for me. I don't know. Who comes to mind? I can't answer for myself. Adam Driver. Yeah, there. That's good. She'll be rich and successful husband, and that'll be good. And he's, and he's cool. He's good shit, yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, what else we got? 2022 goals. 
uh, I'm going to win Pittsburgh Pro. I'm going to win New York Pro. I'm going to win Texas Pro. Wow. And then I'm going to do the Olympia. I don't care how I place. Oh, so you just want to win all those and then you don't care about the Olympia. Yeah. <laughs> Big love from Ireland. Just a curiosity if fertility is something you're worried about. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously being a bodybuilder, you know, and the, the chemical stuff you do to yourself, it's always somewhat of a worry, I suppose. But, you know, I know we are both capable of having children, like from a physiological standpoint. So I think at that point, it's like there's so many things you can do with modern medicine now, you know, with like HCG and HMG and... You know, and even getting into like IVF or like all these things, if you had to, that even if there is concern, I know there's so many modern medical techniques out there that could assist. So it's not like a huge worry of mine. Um, but I mean, obviously, it's a thing that like you do does cross your mind for sure. You know? Yeah, I would challenge any woman who wants to have kids and they're over the age of thirty that they don't actually think about that. Uh, I know it's possible, um, and I know it'll work out how it's supposed to, but I mean, I made a joke earlier about freezing my eggs, so obviously it is something that I think about because I know that there is a time clock on this, and I don't, I also don't want to make my decision based on that time clock. I want to make it based on what's right for our family. So, yeah, I worry about it, but I also know that we'll figure it out. Um. Top three bucket list places to visit. Okay, Alaska. I'd like to go to Alaska. Like, uh, I don't, I really want to go to Alaska. Greece or Croatia, we haven't been to, I'd like to go. I'd really like to go to, I mean, we would just do both of those at once. I'd like to go to like one of those small island places like the Maldives or like. Monaco. Well, that's not an island, but yeah. I'd like to go to Monaco. That's not on my top though. That's not top, no. I, that's fancy pants hey, but I want to go to Alaska I want to go to Greece and I really want to go to Italy I know you've already been I've to been Italy there, yeah. but you still should want to go with me sure and I'd honestly really like to go to somewhere like Thailand China. or China or like somewhere that's just like culturally and like worldly A like shock. very very different from Japan. here Japan yeah or like that you know Dom said Thailand's actually one of his favorite places yeah and I know a lot of people that have been there really say that so and it's cheap you yeah. can like live like a king there someone says heart heart no questions asked Oh, that's well, cute. Well, heart, heart, back to you, un pass, one T. Un pass, one T, we heart, heart you too. Yeah. Um, how do y'all eat so much and don't get an extended, I think you mean distended stomach? I do. She does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi. It's, it's hard for me, like... Doug wants to say hi. I think my appetite... Ooh, oh, yeah. there he is. This is a big man. I think my appetite isn't good enough that I can physically eat so much to get myself that level of distended, like... When you're this, when you're as big and have as much like tissue that needs to be fed as I do, it takes a lot of food to like get in there to really cause distension in myself. Um, like the only time I would is maybe if I eat something that's not agreeing with myself. Um, but I mean, that doesn't happen very often. Like I have a lot of issues with my stomach, but I'm never really distended at any point, like overly, you know. I mean, and if you are, I mean, there's like don't stuff. eat shit that bloats you, basically. Yeah, I mean, obviously you need to be, you know selective with the things you eat and then obviously you know you can add supplements like you know revive makes the gi or fiber product or digestive enzyme i um, mean really depends what is causing the bloating and distension if it's just a singular food source then obviously you could do some sort of elimination diet um, and figure out what's causing the issue um, if that doesn't then obviously you know incorporating some different supplements could be um, something i'm not huge on these i think they're kind of a little bogusy um, but if you want to do like a food sensitivity test, those kind of things can help about as well to kind of narrow down some things that might be in your diet that you could eliminate. Uh, but you can also do that just with you know, a basic elimination diet. Just start taking a one thing that's common that could cause these kind of issues and then keep it out for a bit and then go from there, right? So um, I think we've answered most of the good ones. I, I just saw one. I can't remember what it was. What? I can't remember. Oh, what's one piece of clothing that you would throw out of the other person? You throw out my, uh, my my gun shirt. Yeah, I'm gonna throw it out. I like that shirt. It's, Which what's it again? I don't know, but it's so old and. Ratty. I have this shirt that I bought at Cabela's ah. like a few years ago because I found it at Cabela's and it was a 4XL, which was hard to find at the time. Like I could never find 4XL clothes, 
And it's kind of like a nice light shirt. I can't remember what brand it is. It's like a Smith & Wesson shirt or something. And I wear it around the house. I don't really wear it out in public. But it's Sometimes he does, and it's actually revolting. <laughs> it's not even that bad of a shirt. It's just like, it looks like a shirt you get at Walmart. Like, it's just like a shitty kind of cheap shirt. Right? Oh, you got a package. No, no, no. Come here. Um... I want more. I want more. How would you go about finding a partner passionate about health and fitness? Um, I would question why that is the most important yeah, thing that's in a partner. I think there's so many other things that matter way more than that. Like, you know, I think finding someone that's supportive in your goals and in your lifestyle choices is different than finding someone that necessarily has the exact same ones as you. Um, you know, I think you can have a very, very happy relationship that someone doesn't necessarily have all the same personal interests as you, um, or that cares. I think obviously finding someone that cares about their health and, you know, not being unhealthy in a lot of their habits, I think is important, but I also don't think that someone that's in, like, into like fitness and wellness and stuff like you are is necessarily that important, you know? Yeah, I think that... Someone who cares about their health is someone that just has self-respect. And I think that should always be something that you look for in a person. And I think if you want them to be into the gym with you so you can spend time together in that aspect. Um, I fell in love with him and I fell in love with fitness because that is kind of what I chose to do to connect with him more. Um, Ian likes to watch weird ass like hot ones is on the TV right now. I will choose to watch that and be interested in that because he is. <laughs> but you'll find a partner that cares enough about you that they just like will care about your interests too. And they don't have to have the same interests for them to like be able to care about them with you. Mm -hmm. You can be different and what? <laughs> Who lasts longer? <laughs> Ian. <laughs> Why does it seem, does Melissa jab you? I was asking if you'd give me injections. Oh, shit. <laughs> don't you peg me. Oh, I don't, don't want to talk about <laughs> she that. She doesn't peg me. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Um, it's not gay if you're not gay. Love you guys. That's my saying. It's only I, gay if you're gay. I love you too, and it's, yeah. Well, I think that's it for now. This has only been up for a little bit, so... We might get more. We might be back. We might not. But we're 42 minutes in. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, people don't want to yeah. listen to us talk yeah. for that long. Okay, so there's 42 minutes of Q&A for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, and tell Ian that he we need to do hot ones on here. Yeah, she wants to do. If you guys don't know what hot ones is, where they eat like the increasingly hotter chicken wings while they answer questions. And like I cannot eat hot food at She's all. She's terrible with hot food. So what would we do? That you ask me questions and I ask you questions? We would go back and forth? Yeah, but the, the questions need to be questions that you don't want to answer, I thought. And I thought if you... No, that's not hot ones like that. That's You're thinking more of something like on like Jimmy Fallon when they like eat the disgusting food and it's like you either yeah. have to eat it or... Yeah. You know when you like have to turn the thing and there's like pig's blood and it's like you have to yeah. answer this or you have to eat yeah. this? Yeah. Okay, so that's not hot ones. No, but we could do that. Well, we can get some really gross stuff. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Or you could just do hot stuff because I can't eat hot stuff. Yeah, but I can eat hot stuff, so it's not as like... Okay, well, then I get to put dog poop on a plate for you, and you get to put hot sauce on a plate for me. I don't think that's even. <laughs> 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 but anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjo uh, enjoyed this. Let us know if you'd like to see more of these kind of things. Um, you know, and we, more of me. And more of Melissa. Well, we already knew that. People said that. Um, and I still owe you guys a day of eating um it was like christmas and you know the families were here and stuff and he's been skipping his meals <laughs> how dare you i would never do don't listen to her i would never do such a thing she knows that hits deep so she's saying those kind of things oh i couldn't even finish it I, I would never miss a meal don't accuse me no we'll do a full day of eating yeah we i gotta do a full day of eating and go over all the supplements and stuff i'm using in my off season now that i've started um i know a lot of people are really interested in seeing that so we'll get that for you too um, but we'll get this one up and in the questions or questions in the comments, <laughs> in the questions, in the comments, let me know, um, you know, if you like this and what other kind of things you'd like to see us and, you know, us do, you know, like the, the eat gross stuff idea that she had, or, you know, if we want to do another Q and A like this, but have it more training oriented, um, whatever you guys would like to see, let me know. Um, we'll get it for you. So hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you later.